Hello, I'm Kamil Klusniak, and I'm going to present my recent uh, paper, uh, Lockable Obfuscation from Circularly Insecure Fully Homomorphic Encryption. So let me start by uh, recalling what is program obfuscation. So suppose we have a C++ program uh, that takes as input some X and outputs a uh, Y. And uh, then we have a program uh, called the obfuscator, which is going to take the source program and output our uh, obfuscation. So one crucial uh, thing that we require from uh, the obfuscated program is that it preserves functionality. And this means that uh, on every input, the output should be the same as in the source program. Another thing that we require is that uh, the obfuscated program is only polynomially slower than the source program. And finally, we have our security guarantee. And this is a virtual black box security, which means that even given the obfuscated program, uh, our evaluator can evaluate it. But uh, looking at the code of this program is unable to tell any non-trivial information on the source program. So what functions can we obfuscate uh, from standard assumptions right now? And uh, one uh, class of functions are point functions. And so these are, these are functions that take as input uh, uh, some x and uh, output 1 only if uh, x is equal to a hard-coded point, yeah? So a, a point that is hard-coded in, uh, in this program. Uh, for all other uh, inputs that are not equal uh, this hard-coded point, alpha, uh, we are going to return zero. And point functions have received yeah, already a lot of attention in the literature, yeah, and there are constructions here yeah, from various um, uh, assumptions. Another important class of uh, functions that we know how to obfuscate uh, are conjunctions. They are sometimes called uh, pattern matching with wildcards. Uh, so here again, yeah, we have a lot of uh, you know, research uh, done uh, to obfuscate this sort of functions, and uh, we can do this as, uh, also from, 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 from various assumptions. Now, in this paper, we are focusing on uh, lockable obfuscation and uh, this is obfuscation of uh, so-called compute and compare programs and what are compute and compare programs now let's say uh, that we have a circuit c and this can be any polynomial size circuit and a compute and compare program uh, given the circuit c and given a lock value is a program that uh, outputs one uh, only if uh, c of x, uh, so c of the input yeah, to this program, is equal to the log value. And any other um, situation, uh, the compute and compare program p is going to output zero. Now we can generalize this a little bit. Yeah, and instead of returning one, when we hit the log value, uh, we are going to return a message. And in this paper, we are going to show how to obfuscate uh, this class of programs. So the security property that lockable obfuscation uh, is supposed to guarantee is as follows. Uh, suppose that we have a user and uh, a, a adversary. So in this case, yeah, the adversary is going to choose a circuit C and the message. Uh, and then the user is going to obfuscate the circuit uh, with the message and it's going to choose a log value. Yeah? And this goes into the lockable obfuscation and the obfuscation is then returned to the adversary. Uh, now, an important thing to note yeah, is that the log value has to have high entropy. And in particular, so for, for most of the presentation, we are going to assume that the log is uh, chosen uh, from the uniform di distribution, independent from the circuit, independent from the message. And uh, the goal of the adversary is to distinguish between two worlds. Yeah, so one world is uh, the obfuscation is generated by the user, and the other world is that uh, the obfuscation is generated by a simulator, where the simulator does not have access to the circuit, does not have access to the message, 
or, or the log file. Yeah, so has absolutely zero knowledge about about those um, uh, about those uh, variables. Uh, and yeah, so 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 the adversary is supposed to uh, distinguish between uh, these two worlds. Now, since lockable obfuscation is uh, works only for a very restricted class of functions, yeah. So one may wonder what are the applications of lockable obfuscation. So the first observation is yeah that lockable obfuscation actually implies uh, point function obfuscation and uh, conjunction obfuscation. Another uh, important use case yeah, are uh, compilers. So uh, we can use lockable obfuscation uh, to, for example, uh, compile our public key encryption scheme into our anonymous public key encryption scheme. Uh, and this means yeah, that uh, so the anonymous public key encryption scheme uh, it does not reveal uh, the uh, recipient of a ciphertext. Yeah? So an adversary given uh, our ciphertext is unable to tell uh, to which public key the ciphertext was, uh, uh, was sent. And uh, similarly, we can build uh, anonymous identity-based uh, encryption schemes from lockable obfuscation and identity-based encryption schemes. Uh, so in this case, the ciphertext do not reveal the, the identity of the recipient uh, of a ciphertext. Uh, similarly, we can, we, can, we can build predicate encryption uh, with one-sided uh, privacy and uh, anonymous broadcast uh, encryption. And finally, we know how to build uh, indistinguishability obfuscation for rejecting programs. So these are programs that uh, will always reject every input. Um, and this we can build from lockable obfuscation and uh, witness encryption. Okay, I hope that this is enough for motivation. So let me say a few words of uh, where um, lockable obfuscation came from. And uh, the story that is relevant for this paper yeah, starts with uh, circular security separations. Yeah, So uh, in particular with cycle testers that were introduced uh, or <clears throat> that were first formalized by Bishop Hockenberger and uh, Waters. So there was Earlier work, yeah, that constructed cycle testers, yeah, but uh, yeah, but the first formalization was here, and uh, this notion was later continued uh, by a sequence of works that designed cycle testers from uh, provably secure instantiations of graded encoding schemes. Yeah, so in particular, uh, from the GGH fifteen uh, graded encoding scheme. And uh, the same technique, yeah, was later, or like a generalization of this technique, yeah, was later used by Goyal, Coppola, and Waters, uh, and independently by Vix and Grelis uh, to build lockable obfuscation. And now, so this technique yeah, requires us yeah, to take a third cut, which is uh, of logarithmic depth. Uh, Compile it to represent it as a permutation matrix branching program. And then uh, using le learning with errors, uh, encode uh, this uh, permutation matrix branching programs in a very special, uh, a special way to uh, build uh, lockable obfuscation. Yeah. So, um, the actual construction is a little bit involved, yeah. So I'm not going to go into details, uh, but uh, yes. So this shows us, yeah, that uh, so cycle testers, yeah, or like the, the gradient encoding um, uh, schemes that were provably secure, yeah, under under uh, learning with errors, yeah, uh, they were um, crucial to build uh, lockable obfuscation. Now, let me give you what is uh, our base construction. Uh, intuitively, what is uh, lockable obfuscation? Yeah, so if you would suppose to uh, explain uh, the construction in like a very high level. So let's say that we have a circuit, yeah? And uh, the first observation is, yeah, that, that any obfuscation is uh, a sort of encryption of the circuit, yeah? Uh, but it's not like any encryption of the circuit. It is an encryption of the circuit. 
that allows us to still evaluate the Sitka. So we are going to use a fully homomorphic encryption to uh, encrypt C. And this allows us yeah, to, to um, uh, evaluate the search card on any input X, yeah, and obtain an encryption of C of X. Now, in lockable obfuscation, what we still need to be able to do is to uh, test whether the evaluation, uh, whether C of X, yeah, uh, in the encryption is equal the log value or not, yeah. So, and this is actually the uh, the difficult part, yeah, on how to do this testing. Now again, so what we want to do is, uh, given our encryption of C of X, uh, we need to test whether the encrypted C of X is equal the log value or not. And the idea is to use a full homomorphic encryption scheme that is singularly insecure. And in particular, it is equipped with a cycle tester. And with this, uh, so what is important to note yeah, that is that we require a cycle tester that works even on uh, ciphertext that came out of uh, our evaluation process. Yeah, so these are not necessarily fresh ciphertext. So, so yeah, so so uh, the cycle tester has uh, has, has to work on any uh, correct cipher. Uh, on any cipher text that decrypts correctly. Now, let me let me tell you what actually are those cycle testers. So, a cycle tester is an attack on uh, on an encryption scheme. Yeah, that is able to differentiate between encryptions of zero uh, and encryptions of uh, secret keys. Yeah, that form a cycle. Yeah, so this encryption of secret keys here we have on the left, uh, and uh, yeah, so we have an encryption of uh, secret key two under secret key one. Yeah, and then we'll have an encryption of uh, secret key three under secret key two, and so on and so forth. Yeah, until we have uh, until we complete the cycle, yeah, with an encryption of SK one uh, under SKN. So yeah, and. Uh, the attack algorithm yeah, is able to differentiate uh, <clears throat> between these uh, two uh, situations, and uh, yeah, and, and I'm calling this attack yeah because so previously uh, cycle uh, testers yeah so they were actually considered as attacks yeah so um, so previous research yeah was 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 focused yeah on constructing such cycle testers yeah to show that CPA security does not imply uh, circular security um, and cycle testers was a way uh, to, 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 to show counterintuitives for, uh, uh, for this implication. Now in this talk, yeah, I'm going to simplify yeah, uh, and I, I'm going to show a lockable obfuscator uh, that uses a uh, one cycle tester. Yeah, so in particular, it's going to uh, differentiate uh, an encryption of zero and uh, encryption of its own secret key. Yeah, so an encryption of SK under SK. Now let's put things together. Uh, our lockable obfuscation is going to consist of uh, our encryption of the circa C and our encryption of the secret key SK. But uh, this encryption is uh, uses the log value as uh, a secret key. Now, how to evaluate such lockable obfuscation? So uh, we will first take um, the encryption of the circuit and evaluate this on input uh, the circuit uh, on input X. Uh, what we get, yeah, uh, as a result, yeah, is uh, an encryption of C of X, and it's denoted as D, and then. The uh, crucial part, yeah, is that uh, we are going to take D, uh, so the encryption of C of X, and uh, evaluate the decryption circuit on A, using D as the secret key part. Yeah, so uh, eventually we'll get uh, encryption of the decryption uh, of A, uh, where C of X, yeah, is treated, yeah, as the secret key. Now. 
uh, note that if c of x yeah is equal to log yeah then uh, the ciphertext e is actually our uh, key dependent message uh, uh, ciphertext otherwise yeah it is going to be a different uh, ciphertext and our cycle tester is supposed to uh, be able to differentiate yeah, between these two. Now, let me briefly sketch yeah, the security proof. So remind yeah, that we have our two ciphertexts, C and A. And as a first step, we are going to turn A into an encryption of zero, assuming uh, CPA security of the, of the encryption scheme. Now, the second step, uh, is uh, we are going to turn A into a uniformly random value. And uh, here we need to assume uh, pseudo random ciphertext. Yeah. Uh, the problem is yeah, that uh, from CPA security, we cannot get rid of the log. Yeah. So uh, CPA security doesn't say anything yeah, whether we can distinguish uh, encryption under one secret key from an encryption of another secret key. So, so yeah, so we have to do this uh, uh, assuming pseudo random uh, ciphertext. And the last step is to uh, turn uh, the uh, encryption of uh, the third cut C into an encryption of zero. Yeah, so in the last hybrid, we have some uniformly random uh, value for A and an encryption of zero for C. Yeah. And uh, both ciphertexts are completely independent of uh, the uh, of the circuit C and the log value. Uh, so this 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 completes the proof. Now, in the paper, we actually uh, have another construction that is a little bit more complicated, but it doesn't need to assume pseudo random ciphertext. So the the whole proof is uh, requires only CPA security from the encryption schemes. As I pointed out earlier, what we needed to assume uh, previously for CPA security to work yeah, is that the log value is chosen uniformly at random from the secret key space. Yeah, but actually we can extend uh, the construction uh, to have log values chosen from different distributions. And uh, in particular, uh, I'm going to focus on the unpredictable distribution. So, which is a distribution where, uh, when we have uh, X and some auxiliary data uh, chosen uh, from uh, from this distribution, then our uh, adversary, given the auxiliary data, is unable to output X. So uh, there are uh, in the literature many papers yeah, that realize public key encryption uh, and um, so the random number generators uh, for uh, secret keys chosen from this uh, distribution. Uh, now, uh, the auxiliary data, yeah, it may be for like, like, like anything, it may be for, in, in particular, it may be, for example, the third cut yeah, that, that, that we are going to obfuscate. Now, the second distribution is uh, alpha pseudo entropy distribution. Yeah, so this says yeah, that when we have X, yeah, then conditioned on some auxiliary data, it's uh, Hill pseudo entropy is uh, larger than some polynomial uh, alpha from the security parameter. And here again, we have a ton of literature yeah, that was uh, concerned in building public key encryption scheme. Uh, that is uh, secure when the secret key is chosen uh, from uh, such a distribution. Uh, and this is in particular the literature that is concerned with leakage resistance. Yeah, So, so uh, we consider some leakage, uh, some non-trivial leakage of information about the secret key. Another extension that we consider in the paper yeah, is uh, multi-bit messages. Yeah? So uh, previously, I described a very simplified uh, version of the local obfuscation that uh, could, uh, where we could only test uh, whether, a circuit, uh, whether the obfuscated circuit evaluates to the log value or not. Yeah? So it output one or zero. Uh, so to encode yeah, any message, uh, and uh, then later decode yeah, the message uh, from 
a successfully evaluated lockable obfuscation. So when C of X yeah, is equal to the log value, uh, we are going to publish additionally uh, encryptions uh, of uh, the bits of the message. Now, evaluation for the most part yeah, goes exactly the same yeah, as, it is, uh, as it was yeah, for the base construction. Uh, but additionally, when we hit, when we evaluate yeah, the cipher text to the log value, and then we get our key cycle, uh, then we are going to be able to decode the message, uh, the bits of the message as follows. Yeah, so uh, suppose we take the first uh, uh, encryption of the first bit, we are multiplying this yeah, with our potential uh, key cycle, and if the message uh, bit was a zero, then we are getting an encryption of zero. If it was an encryption of one, yeah, then we are getting uh, uh, the encryption uh, of uh, the secret key under the secret key. So we have our key cycle and our cycle tester is able to, again, distinguish between these two um, uh, situations. And uh, this way we are going to uh, decrypt uh, the message bit by bit. So very, very simple idea, really. Now, in summary, in the paper, we have a generic construction of lockable obfuscation from polar homomorphic encryption with, uh, equipped with a cycle tester. And uh, so, as I said earlier in the presentation, I simplified things here and I used only uh, one cycle to describe this, the scheme. So in the paper, we actually have a, a general construction that uses a, a arbitrary length uh, cycle uh, uh, of keys. As a, as a end note, yeah, so let me note that um, in previous literature showed yeah, that having lockable obfuscation, so this was one of the applications for lockable obfuscation. Yeah? So given lockable obfuscation and an encryption scheme, uh, we can turn it into an encryption scheme with a cycle tester. So, and this encryption scheme may in particular be a full homomorphic encryption scheme. Now in this work, uh, what I showed yeah, is uh, that given a full homomorphic encryption scheme and uh, equipped with a cycle tester, we get lockable obfuscation, which completes the cycle. Thank you. And uh, if you are interested, the paper is available on ePrint. Bye.